Carry on, gentlemen. Morning, sir. Morning, Keggy. Lieutenant? Yeah. Oh, replacements? Yes, sir, three of them. Fresh in from ITR. Okay, Keggy, send them in. Have their NCO stand by. Aye, sir. All right, you men, report in. Sir, Private Barlow reporting is ordered. Sir, Private Bronski reporting is ordered. Sir, Private Cameron reporting is ordered. At ease, men. Welcome to Bravo Company. I'm Lieutenant Rice, your platoon commander. If you have any problems here, you'll take them to your squad leaders. If he can't handle them, he'll bring them to the acting platoon sergeant, Kagi, or to me. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if you gentlemen will follow me, I'll turn you over to your NCOs of your squads, and they'll help you get squared away. I have three recruits from ITR. Bronski? Corporal Vega will take care of you. Corporal Collins is your new squad leader, Barlow. All right, gentlemen, move out. I'm sorry, I'm late, Lieutenant. I just got the words. That's all right, Devlin. Devlin, I want you to take private camp. Private? Listen, Kagi. you're willing to say. It's personal. Yes, sir. Consider that sufficient? No, sir. What have you got to say about this, Devlin? It beats me, Lieutenant. I've never seen this joker before in my whole life. That's a lousy, stinking law. Listen, you black monkey! You knock off that kind of talk, Corporal! Face around here, Cameron. All right. You say you two have met before. Where? We went to the same high school back home. There were just a few of us black monkeys. But there were a lot of white apes, and Devlin was a king of You're not about that kind of talk, too, Private! Sergeant? Sergeant! Hard, Private! Squeeze it! Well, I don't even want to see you breathing. Now, I didn't hear anyone ask you your opinions. Not a life, love, politics, or any other subject, got it? Any question of fact you're asked, you answer in the same way. Fact! Just as bare and untrimmed as you know how to put it. Well, according to your file, Cameron, you show a GCT as 142. One third again higher than the average. In training, you show superior marks in every department. Or have they given me someone else's file by mistake? No, sir. Devlin, Peter C., Lance Corporal, also superior marks. Made his last rank in only five months, Sergeant. Or do I have you confused with someone else, Devlin? No, sir. Well, then do you or do you not know this man? Well, I guess I remember him. Sir! Sir, I remember him now. He's changed a lot, though. In those days, he was just another... He was just another skinny kid in those days, sir. There was some trouble, you know, kid stuff? Kid stuff. Like six guys with bicycle chains jumping me in an alley. Lieutenant, I had nothing to do with that. Sir, he's a liar. You? From the day I came to his school, 
He was the one telling me I was going to get it. I told that to all of them. We had a good school going before they... All right, maybe I shut my mouth off, like kids do. But I don't know who clobbered him. But I do. When somebody hits you with a chain, Lieutenant, you know who did it. I was just another nigger that didn't know his place. I told you to knock off that kind of talk, Private. Sir, you asked me for fact. I was just quoting what Devlin said to me once. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever said that to you since you joined the Marine Corps, Private? No, sir. I like the Corps fine. Until a few minutes ago. I even like boot camp, sir. I didn't see ounce one of prejudice there. Everybody got chewed out all the time. You figure it's different here. If you've got Devlins here, sir, and if they can make NCOs, then I must have had it figured all wrong. It's no different from the rest of the world. Sir. Sergeant. Corporal Devlin will report back to his squad. Private Cameron will stand by in the outside office. Corporal, right face. Now get out of here. Private, move up and stand by. You slice it, Lieutenant. Attacking a non-commissioned officer is a court's martial offense. And you haven't as yet given me one good reason for reducing it to company punishment. The man was reporting for his first day of line company duty, sir. He was nervous and keyed up already. When he saw Devlin's face, he... Well, he could see his stripes, couldn't he? I don't think he noticed him, sir. He attacked Devlin on a personal basis, not a professional one. Are you sure that you're not prejudiced about this, Rice? Sir? It works both ways, you know. Are you sure you're not defending Cameron because he's a Negro? Sir, I'm saying that both men have excellent records. I think they're intelligent enough to be educated out of their attitudes. Educated out of them? Yes, sir. Mm. By you, I presume. Well, sir, uh, somebody has to try it. Well, don't you think it would be wiser to transfer one of them out? Or at least put them in separate platoons? Possibility, sir, but... But you've become bored. You've got some time on your hands, so you thought you'd take on a little hobby. Social worker. Well, no, sir, I'm not bored, no. I, uh... But I do happen to come from a town where there were three or four Negroes in the entire community, sir. Until I went to the academy, I never met a Negro my own age, sir. And since I joined the Corps, I... Well, I just haven't had any experience with a racial incident. I see. So you're suggesting a practical workshop in racial conflict for your education and amazement. Sir, I'm saying that since I am commanding a unit in an integrated service that I should, well, find out what it's all about, sir. Well, it's a very noble attitude. I think it's a practical attitude, sir. I'd rather find out for the first time here in training than in actual combat. I see. All right, approved on this basis. If this blows up in your face, if it creates any interference, if it causes any problem whatsoever in this company, I'm holding you responsible. Oh, Ernie. There'll be other times. And better places. <sighs> Guess what? Hmm? Found a job already. Not the county? It's not that easy. I'm gonna have to look around, meet some people first, you know. Sure. Meantime, scrub floors, huh? I'm working as a waitress. It's not a bad job, Ernie. Tips are good. Have they got any white college graduates working there? <sighs> All right, baby. Tell Mama about it. You don't need me to tell you. 
It's the same here as it was back home. You know why I couldn't come into town to meet you? I'm restricted to base. Why? Pete Devlin's here. What happened? There's a fight. He's an NZO on my platoon. He jumped you? No, I jumped him. Well, what else do you expect? Maybe too much. But I thought after a few years, a person would start to grow a little. Everybody's got a right to settle scores but us. Is that it? I'm nobody's Uncle Tom, Norma. I'm a man. I've got a right to feel and act like a man. Well, if jumping somebody's all it takes, then why don't you trade that nice uniform in for a funny white sheep with a pointed cap and a burning cross? Norma, I'm not crawling for anybody. Not even for you. Who's asking you to? Look, if I'm willing to leave home and take any kind of work I can get just so we can be married, well, the least you can do is stay out of trouble. You said you wanted to make a career for yourself in the Marine Corps. Oh, I can't. Not with Devlin here. Well, are you going to start a feud? Well, feuds are... are for the ignorant. We can't afford them. But above all, I want you to live in the world with me and be happy. But the world has got to change first. It's got to be made to change. How? With more fists and blood? That's their way. That's all they need. Stop it. Look, my father, your folks, all of us before, we wouldn't fight back. We took it. But what did it get us? Things are changing. We were born losers, and we'll stay that way until we change it ourselves. So you're going to start a war? I didn't start it. Well, that doesn't matter. And nobody wins a war. They're all losers. We were just sitting there drinking beer. I didn't even get introduced to her. And uh, she asked me for a cigarette from there on in. <laughs> it's lollipop time. You're leaning against my bunk, Devlin. Oh. Well, I better uh, <clears throat> go get myself decontaminated. What was that? Hold everything over there. Well, it's past time me and you had a little talk. Kindly accompany me to the executive suite. And I mean like now. Sit down. Everybody's got something that bugs them. With some people, it's a man. Just one man who sort of stands for everything he hates. Now, that's not only foolish. Look, uh, we'll talk about it sometime, huh, Dad? I'm kind of busy. I'm talking to you now, new boy. You're tight. And I'm telling you to stay loose. This platoon was real nice before you moved in here with that chip on your shoulder. Well, why don't you fix it for me to transfer out? I'm not too crazy about you either, Sergeant. Man, you don't know how lucky you are. You might have wound up in Lieutenant Hanson's platoon. Look, one's not much different from the next. Is that what you think? Hear me good, Cameron. Hanson figures a Negro Marine had better be twice as good as a white Marine, or else. Because Hanson is a Negro himself. Am I beginning to come through to you? Yeah, I'm beginning to get the message all right. Well, get this, too. There's six of us in this platoon, and three out of the six are NCOs. And that figures out to be 50% when I went to school. Doesn't that prove something? Yeah. Yeah. I figure that proves that you and this Lieutenant Hanson and the others are all, uh, Uncle Toms. I'd purely love to dispute that with you, Boot. But I work too hard for these stripes. 
And I'm not about to blow them on a few minutes of pleasure. Anything you say, Uncle. Cameron! There's no way of your getting at Devon without running yourself while you're at it. Don't bet on that, Sergeant. Now, the purpose of the athletic program is to provide diversity in training as well as physical conditioning. Also a good way to get rid of hostilities, Cameron. That's why I ask you over here. Sir, are you ordering me to do this? No. Strictly voluntary. Sir, it was really voluntary. I'll go along with it. Where do I go to change? Right over there, Cameron. coaching you, Tigers. I'm gonna have to risk taking a few lumps myself. Mm. Now, Devlin's moving in on you, Kagan. You can't keep him off. Here's why. Kagan, take the corner. Now, Kagan is trying to keep Devlin away with a left jab. That's very good. But here's what he's doing wrong. Devlin? Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now, you see there? I did work, but I, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, you see there, that left was like a slow freight train. Can't keep it by the way of that. Now, watch this. Devlin? Yeah. All right. Snap it Snap it Now, you don't push it at the man. Snap it in there. Now, you may not be able to uh, put him away with this, but you'll score points. Keep him off balance. <laughs> Make him wish he was in some other place. What's more important? Helen? Yeah. <laughs> when you're hitting him, uh, he isn't hitting you. You okay? Yeah, sure. Atta boy. Yes, sir. All right, now you see? Snap it in there. Boom. Snap it. All right, let's try it. Break it up. Come on, let's try it. All right. Cameron? Cameron? Sir. You got the idea here? Yes, sir, I've got it. Keep that elbow down. Sarge, you have to teach me. Maybe you'd like to show me what you learned. What? I'm mean, glad to show you what I learned. Hey! All right, you two. Listen! Devlin? Yes, sir. Cameron, I do the matching here. And you're not ready for Devlin. You got that? It's a matter of opinion, Lieutenant. Listen, anytime you want a little instruction, I'll be glad to give it to you. Devlin, I'll tell you when. Now, get over there and loosen up. Yes, sir. I'll be waiting. I've had a lot of practice in waiting. <laughs> Your pardon. Yes? I'm Private Cameron's platoon commander. My name is Rice, Bill Rice. I'm Norma Bartlett. 
Ernie's fiance, I think. Problems? And personal problems, Lieutenant. Well, I didn't mean this as an intrusion, Miss Bartlett. I'm having a few problems with your fiance myself. I thought you might be able to help. They concern Private Cameron's ethnic background. You mean he's a Negro? Yes, ma'am. I, uh, I've been trying to reach him, to talk to him. I haven't had much luck. He seems to be going on the assumption that because he's Negro and, well, I'm Caucasian. A lieutenant. If the words white and black come easier, why not use them? They're perfectly handy, acceptable references. If you stumble around embarrassed, it's just going to make both of us uncomfortable. When people are afraid to talk, it's no good at all. Thank you. That's the way I've always thought. If people would stop acting as if they were different. Well, we are different, Mr. Rice. You mean the color of our skin is different? And that's all? Well, there are, uh, of course, sociological factors. Economics play a part in it, too. Certain groups have their own tradition and mores. <laughs> I guess I sound a little textbook, huh? Yes, you do. Lieutenant, I can't help you talk with Ernie. But he's intelligent. He'll understand the full meaning of every word and sentence you use. Only I don't know what you're going to tell him. He's been a Negro a lot longer than you've been thinking about his problem. I have a responsibility to him, Miss Bartlett. He's headed for trouble. He's angry, hostile. Lieutenant, would it be easier if he were the jolly type? You know, just a child, really. Always laughing and singing. A little lazy and irresponsible, maybe. But better than a vaudeville show when he gets to dancing and clowning. I don't think that's quite fair. Well, Ernie thinks a lot of things aren't fair. For example, we just had a fight over my working in town as a waitress. He doesn't like the idea of my doing that kind of work when I was trained for something else. I know he's a proud boy. He's a proud man, Lieutenant. I'm sorry. You said words weren't that important. That's just the point you're missing. On both sides, it's about 10% logic and 90% emotion. And that's why any talking about it will do about as much good as... Well, your experiment in catharsis by good, clean athletics. It's just not that easy, Lieutenant. I don't know the answer, but I do know you're nowhere near it. and hold the onions. Hi. Look, I can't talk to you now. I'm busy. Hey, my two weeks were up at 1800. Aren't you glad to see me? Hey, coffee now, honey. I'm in a hurry. Yes, sir. That's how we start, huh? All right, maybe I hit back too fast. There's nothing wrong with hitting back. But you, you're so anxious to fight. You're beginning to hit first. All right, I'm sorry. I'm willing to try if you'll... Check, please. Yes, sir. Norma, please. Mm -hmm. Look, if I'm willing to say I'm sorry... The man is waiting for his check. And I've been waiting for two weeks. May I have my check? Yes, sir, right away. Would you let go? The man is waiting. And this man doesn't have the same right to be in a hurry, is that it? Hey, how about it? I gotta get back to the office. What are you calling him, Now, just a minute. All I did was ask for the check. Your check, sir. I'm sorry, I kept you waiting.
keep the change. Thank you very much. Give us 30 pieces. My name is Samuel Hall, and I hate you one and all. You're a bunch. Hey, that you, Keggy? Hey, how's that movie? Huh? I don't need that to take care of you, boy. Nothing, sir. We're just horsing around. Just horsing around, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. You two come with me. You're going to get what you've both been begging for. is over when one of you quits or is counted out. One of you commits a foul, he's finished. You ready? All right, get at it. All right, come on, come on, come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You okay, devil? Yeah, sure. All right, here, come on. All right, let's go. You're through for the night. Come on, let's get a shower. Come on, get a shower. Devlin? Yes, sir? I want you to get a shower, too.
Good afternoon, sir. Last relay now, sir. Everything copacetic, Sergeant? With all respect, Lieutenant, they've been trying to lick this problem since Cain and Abel. I wouldn't be too disappointed if you didn't come up with the answer either. Try next boy. You ready? Go. Woo! Look at Cameron. Uh, yeah, look at Come, baby. Hey, babe, Come Cameron. On. Come on, hey. Cameron. Come on, babe. Security? You have an inferiority complex? It's got to be something like that. You're the original gutless wonder. You're twisted enough to hate a man because of his color, but not honest enough to admit it. With the lieutenant's permission. Permission denied. Do you agree with what I said about Devlin? Sir? Do you agree? Yes, sir, I do. Well, then you hear this. The same goes for you every word. In my opinion, you're not a grown man, Cameron. You're a spoiled child with temper tantrums. You're full of whining and self-pity. And you're just as bigoted as Devlin. And just as blind with hatred. And only a little more honest about it. In short, the two of you were made for each other. So, starting now, you're a team. We're gonna work together and sweat together and tent down together and maybe, just maybe, sink together. Sir, I respectfully object. Objection noted and denied, Corporal. If you can function as a team, that's just dandy. And if you're hell-bent on ruining each other, well, here's your big chance. Now, you dismissed. Get out of here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> We can bivouac in the clearing up ahead, Keggy. Yes, sir. Set up the shelter halves, secure all the gear. All right, sir.
Let's go. All them hips. I'm falling. George and Regan, repel and help that man. Come on, you mountain goats. Keep them moving. Cameron, Devlin, you stop dragging your feet. One side private. You hold it right there, you hear me? Okay, give me that snap link. Come on. Right, sir. We're switching partners. Cameron, you and Devlin pair off. You, Henry, you two pair off. You two men take lane three. Want to play games? You can risk each other's neck. Sir. Go ahead. Keggy! Up rope! is going to keep us in after school. Oh, why don't you shut up? Listen, how would you like to take a high dive off here right now? I'd like it just fine this way. Get your hands off me. I'll go first. I'll decide what goes here. Get off, Sergeant. Cameron, Devil, and all you have to do is help each other down there. Quite a fall if they don't, Lieutenant. Well, I imagine that's occurring to them right now, Sergeant. Listen, black boy, you make just one mistake. What you waiting for, girls? <sighs> Suppose you watch me less, white boy, and your feet more. If I fall, you're coming along.
trusty tool down there. Make sure you can depend on it. Why didn't you skip the good advice and toss us a rope? Why don't you stole the cheddar and climb? each other. I work together. Stay together, you two. Just what did you prove, Lieutenant? Proved what I had been proving all along, sir, that I'm a soft-headed fool who shouldn't be allowed a command. I'll make the judgment on your fitness for command, Lieutenant. I'm trying to explain, sir, that I risked injury to two of my men. On an approved, required, scheduled exercise. But I arbitrarily put two men together who have a previous history of trouble in working together, sir, just to prove that... I don't know what I was expecting to prove, sir, that they'd have some big deal at the top, shake hands, say they understood how wrong they'd been. All I know is that they hated each other at the top just as much as they did at the bottom, sir. And that surprised you? The point is, Captain, I came in here a few weeks ago with a big speech about wanting this problem so that I could learn how to handle it. Well, I've tried everything, and I haven't accomplished anything. As a matter of fact, sir, I haven't even learned anything. Well, I don't happen to agree with that. Well, that's very kind of you, Captain. Being kind to lieutenants is not one of my long suits. In this case, I am being objective, and you are being egotistical over having just suffered rather a trifling wound to your inflated ego. And did you really expect to come up with a magical key to all of this? What were you planning to do for an encore? A walk on water? This company, Rice, and your platoon, and every squad in it, is like a whole world in miniature. We're a cross-section. No better, no worse. Now, if you have 50 men under you, then you're sitting on 50 different combinations of frustration and hope, bitterness, goodness, ugliness, beauty, and greed. 50 impossible equations. And this is about as much as you can change any of it. And even to do that, you've got to have the strength of Daniel and the patience of Solomon. And the rest of the time, mister, you've got to try to be what we're spending a lot of time and money trying to make you. That's a troop commander. And even though you can't change it, you can still make it work by habit and discipline. And that's the first step, the one that counts. Get them working together, here or anyplace else. Now with that, at least you can chip away at what's wrong. And it works. Negro, Irishman, Swede, Protestant, Catholic, Jew, for all of us. It's what's held the Corps together for 189 years. go. I've got it. Great. Bookkeeper in a construction firm. Uh, look, hon, I know you've been taking a lot of punishment from me. Well, I don't like all this trouble either. Still. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. 
Cameron didn't know the half of it. Evening, Cameron. Evening, sir. Evening, Miss Bartlett. Good evening, Lieutenant. Mind if I stay here a few minutes, sir, or while they're forming up? It's all right, but I suggest you get your gear on. Yes, sir. How's our mutual problem, Lieutenant? Well, it's still a problem. Here. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything, really. I'd say this would be a pure waste of time for me, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see what you mean. <laughs> All in. I take it all back, Lieutenant. You budged him. Maybe two of them. <laughs> Just about that far. Uh, it can be quite a lot. Well, good night, Miss Bartlett. Good night, Lieutenant. Ha! 